Hey, welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So in the last video, I did a review of a 3D printer and a few questions I got was how I, how did I print Suzanne the monkey head? So I'm just gonna show you how I did that. Let's jump right in. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and add the mesh. So Shift A, mesh, and then down to monkey. So I'm just gonna go over to the scene tab. I'm gonna change this to millimeters. So now if I press N, I can see the dimensions of this object. We can always scale this up later on in the slicing software, but for now this is okay. But looking at the model, we wanna do a few things. If we tab into edit mode, you might notice that the eyes are actually a separate object. So if we just select L to select this, we can see there's two objects there. So, so all we need to do is join the eyes to the mesh object. So help us out, get rid of these faces here. I'm just gonna hide these. So if I press seven on the number pad, we can go to top view and I press Z to go in wireframe view. And I make sure I press A to deselect anything. And then I'm gonna press B to use this box selection or the border selection. I'm just gonna left click and drag. And I just wanna select all these faces here. Or oh, actually all these vertices, but we switch it to faces. Then we can press H to hide them. You can actually see through. So here are the eyes, these ones here. If I hold Alt and then click, can select the ring so you see these are the eyes and then we need to connect these up to the face one of the problems we'll find is when we try and connect the vertices up we see that there's this line here will join up to this line this line will join up to this one this one to this one and so on but you see there's one here that's missing and actually a couple of them do the same thing we need to add extra um, edges so simple way to do that if we press Control and then R we can highlight this here. So we want to add this purple line right about here and we'll eventually join up the two vertices so it's one object. But we need to make sure we add uh, enough edges. So again, this one's going to this one. This edge will be going to this one. And this one can go to this one. So let's add another one here, Control R. And make sure we do it on this eyeball, not on the face. It's very tricky how to see which area it is, but um, you get used to it. So again, that's the second one done. This one will be over here. This one will go to that one. So let's add another one here. This one to this one, this one to that one, this one to that one. We need one here. This one will go to that one. And we just need to add one more. So now we've done that, we need to do the same thing for this eye. So now let's go ahead and join these up. Before we do anything else, what we can do, if we go to face select mode, hold alt and then right click on this one and press X, delete faces. And then do the same for this one. Alt, right click, press X, delete faces. Okay, so now we've got rid of that. We wanna join, if we go to vertex select mode, we wanna join these vertices together and it can be a little bit trickier <laughs> to see them. So if we right click, if we hold alt, right click on here, we wanna connect these to these. And if we select the vertex, hold shift, right click, select this one. And I'm gonna hit spacebar and then type merge. So we, we get a few options how to merge this. Now, what we need to do is join these in a way where if we select this one first, then select this one. And then if we type hit spacebar, type merge, we want to do it at first. So the these jump to the position. We don't, we don't want to move, we can move the eyeball around, but we don't want to move the eye socket around, if that makes sense. So let's go through this and just get this done. Hit spacebar, since we've already had it typed, we can just press enter and then enter again. So always make sure you select so always make sure you select the socket, the eye socket first, and then you can do the eye. So it is kind of tricky to do this. I'm gonna go through it and uh, try and do it very quickly, but what I will do is I'll upload the model that I make to say blend swap. So if you wanna download the finished model, you can go ahead and download that. Um, I'll throw a link in the description. 
uh, it saves you a bit of trouble just um, doing this eyes step but I'm going to go through this dead quick and then show you the next step which would be adding um, like a base so I'm just going to do that very quickly So that's the first eye done, and as you can see, the it's now one object. Um, I will fix the pupil as well, but you can see now this is one object, whereas this is still needs connecting. But again, I'm going to do the same thing, so it's kind of tricky to see at first, but once you get the hang of it, um, you can kind of see where they are. So let's right click this one, and then try and find the eye, which is here. Hit spacebar, hit enter hit enter again so it's just re very repetitive but it's not too difficult once you kind of see now you can see where you, when you select the wrong one now I know the eye is this these faces here but as you can see these the orange lines indicate that I'm selecting the eye socket so what I need to do is deselect that it helps if you go into wireframe view sometimes and then select it that way now I can see I'm selecting the the face now I can hit spacebar enter enter so you see this vertex goes in through the mesh. That's why you can't really select it. So if you select the eye socket, then press Z, then hold shift, left, right click. You know, now we can see that we're selecting the, the eye again. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. Um, I mean, it's not too difficult. It's just a very, it's just a bit time consuming and a bit of a pain, but once you've done it, it will be complete. Both of the eyes done we can press alt h to unhide everything press a to select it all again hit the space bar and then what we can do is we type um, we type remove and we just want to remove doubles I mean I don't think it would have any doubles but just in case so now we can make this look a lot better by adding a subsurf modifier so go over here to the modifiers tab then under generate let's go down to subsurf and then we can increase this quite a bit and it doesn't really make a difference if we use render we just use the view but that looks a lot better still a little bit square so if we hit t go down to shading and let's just smooth that much better so another thing i want to do is kind of sharpen these lines so if i go here press ctrl r to add a loop cut just bring this in like that so it looks a lot better, looks a lot sharper. Do the same thing for this side. I also want to do it for the pupils. Try and do the same thing for the pupils. Control R, bring it closer. And then I'll add another one here. So when we when we 3D print it, I mean, again, it's going to be quite small. So whether you notice this detail or not, um, We'll see, I guess. They were happy with the, the face. I'm going to press number pad three to go to the side view. Then we just press tab just to go to object mode. Then press R to rotate. I'm going to do something like this. Then shift A. Let's go ahead and add in a cylinder. That's far too big. If we zoom out, we can see. Let's scale this down. Keep scaling. Because remember, we're working in uh, millimeters. Obviously, every time we add a new object, it's going to be quite massive, so keep that in mind as well. So zoom this right down. This is going to be a kind of like a pedestal or a, a float. I'm going to scale it on the Z. Scale it on the Shift Z. Might be a bit too thin, but again, we can always change it later on if it is. Looks okay. Maybe rotate this, bring it up. Now I'm going to add um, a base here, like a support. So I'm just going to select this, tab into edit mode, select the face, select this top face. I'm going to do is I'm going to press E to extrude 
S to scale. And then E to extrude and bring it up like this. Now, now again, we need to make this a single object. So I'm going to select this object here. And then I'm going to go to modifiers, Boolean. And then what we want to do is select the object. We can use this tool here and just select the pedestal here. And then it does this, <laughs> which is it's showing you where it's intersecting, which is good, I guess. So you can see where it's intersection, but we want to change the operation. So let's go from, let's change this to union, which means add. And then give it a second. So once we apply the Boolean, this is how it will look. But for now, we can still move things around and it's a little bit slower. So hopefully it doesn't crash. But what I want to do is make sure the face is touching the base and maybe a bit of the back as well. So I'm just going to position this. And I could probably turn off the subsurf modifier just to just the visibility. So it goes a little faster. There we go. So go to the Boolean and now we can go ahead and apply it. So as I mentioned before, the ears are going to need some supports. So we could actually model this in Blender or we could use the, um, the slicing software to do that. So and well, I'll just use the slicing software. And now what we can do is export this as an STL file. Make sure you select the object, go to file, export, then we can just export this as an STL and then go here where it says selection only. Then it's only going to export the STL that you want. Now make sure you remember where you save this to. So then go ahead and export. So it takes a couple of seconds to export. So once it's exported, we can go ahead and load up our slicing software. So I'll do that now. Now, as I mentioned in the review for this 3D printer that I'm using, the software it came with was corrupted. It didn't work, but it also came with a copy of Cura. It's a out of date copy of Cura, but obviously Cura is one of the go-to places to go for your slicing needs, I guess. So if you want to use Cura, go ahead and do that. It's the one I'm using. If this is your first time printing anything, um, it will look a bit crazy, like what do all these things do, but um, out of the box from the first print that I did, it was actually pretty good. Um, a few things do need changing, but we are using it for a while. I'm sure I'll get these values to somewhere that will be perfect but what we can do go ahead and load in the model so hit this button here give that a couple of seconds and um so the scale is quite small i mean i want this to be a bit bigger it looks pretty good it doesn't look too bad so as i mentioned before it didn't matter how big you, you modeled this and um, we can always scale it up using um, using the software so we'll do that now but one thing you should notice up here where it says four minutes that's how long it would take to render or to print at this size it would also take point uh, 0 0.06 meters of uh, filament and it would weigh less than a gram so gives you these stats up which i think is amazing <laughs> now what we can do is just scale this up if we go down here to these tools we just want to scale this maybe scale this about six it's quite a bit bigger you can see it's 62 millimeters which now once we've done this we'll wait for this to update to see how long it would take okay so it says here it would take it's estimating that it's going to take three and a half hours and it's going to take 7.65 meters of filament and it's going to weigh 23 grams so 7.65 meters is not really a lot um so you can get like a roll of filament for like 20 quid and it's uh, 300 meters so now again this filament can change you can have more of it put inside i mean right now if we look where it says fill the fill density is 20 percent so inside this it's only 20 percent filled so there's a lot of uh, lines and what we can do i can actually show you if we go to view mode go to uh, layers we can see this is how it is built in layers um if we zoom in and just decrease the layers we can see around the outside is going to be filled completely but then you're going to have this sort of uh, filled in pattern. So again, you can always change this. If you want to have more density, you can do that. But if you fill it more, it not only will it add more time to the print, but it's also going to use more filament. So, I mean, with 20% um, filled, that's actually pretty good. But again, you can change it if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Uh, again, you can check other things like overhang. If there's too much of an overhang somewhere, it will show you. Um, but let's go back to normal. Now, as I mentioned with the ears, um, they're going to be 
some trouble. It, now, obviously, there's there's some give or some leeway for overhang, but uh, for, for this example, we're going to need some help. So what I'm going to do is if we go over here where it says support, go to where it says support type, and I'm going to press everywhere. So anywhere that needs it, it's going to give it. So you can go ahead and change any of these values if you need to, but I think that'll be fine. Again, it's going to add some time to this. So let's see what it changes to now. So it's three hours and 37 minutes, 7.7 .7 meters. That's not too bad. So you just want to save this now to your SD card. Okay. Go ahead and print it. Oh, my God.